I have a love for nice warm cups of coffee, especially in the mornings. I also have a love for restaurant management games. And if you found yourself on this video, you probably share this love for both of those things too. Hey guys, Ramen King here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my review on restaurant management sim Coffee Please, a game developed by Nepix with a big thank you to one 2 play for granting me this opportunity to show this game off to you guys. Keep in mind that this game is still in early access, so information in this review will likely change sometime down the road. Coffee Please is a very cozy, point-and-click restaurant management sim with a lot of realistic features where you'll be making different drinks and food for customers, setting prices for your food, expanding your restaurant, adding in decorations, grabbing the bill and giving change, and even getting to care for your restaurant's cat. Your main goal in Coffee Please is to make money, continually level up through customer satisfaction, and upgrade features of your restaurant such as adding items to your food and drink menu, adding plants, and more chairs and tables. Gameplay starts off with a very simple character picker where you can choose between one of two characters. Right now, there's not much variety, nor is there really a way to modify the looks of characters. You then have an option of difficulty between relaxing and challenging. Relaxing mode allows you to see what you need to make for customers while in the drink and food menu, whereas challenging mode gets rid of that, but you'll still be able to remind yourself what the customer wants when you walk by them. Once we get into the actual game, we're taught through a pretty thorough tutorial on the day-to-day -day functions like how to order resources off the computer, how to stock delivered said resources, accept customer orders, make the order using our resources, and how to give change back to the customer. We're also taught how to change our prices, which I think is a really cool feature. It really makes you feel like you're actually managing a real menu. Don't go too crazy though, or you'll find yourself with customers that'll get mad at you for selling your tea at $50 per cup. Lastly, the tutorial tells you to wait until the end of your shift and to click end day. I found myself fulfilling orders, looking at the time, and questioning when my workday would end. Just like real life! Turns out your work shift in Coffee Please starts at 5pm and ends at 1am. The first couple days, I kind of spent my time testing things out, figuring out what kind of price to set for tea, and gauge how much stuff I need to order per day. Taking orders starts off nice and easy with one item orders, but as you expand the menu, the orders lengthen and get harder to remember. Luckily, the people don't have any timers, so you can take as long as you need to walk by them and review their orders. You can also flip the open sign to close if you need to stop time, which is really nice. Making the orders is simple, with picking the food or drinks with size and topping options. I found giving out change to be really fun and engaging, and feels similar to actually giving out change in real life. As somebody who's experienced working in a setting with a register, I found myself sometimes fumbling with change as the coins being used are different than I expected. 50 cent coins aren't often used here in the US, and in this game are used in place of the more commonly found dime coin, which is worth 10 cents. I got used to it eventually though. It's also funny too, because you can give customers any amount of money as long as it's over the correct change amount. I was happily giving out hundreds of dollars to people. Just don't use this money hack in real life, okay? I also felt like earning money was a bit on the sluggish side, with some of the upgrades taking quite a few days to obtain since each chair's price scales. Because of this, I think the game would really benefit from maybe something like being able to earn tips to help keep the player feeling like they're not just grinding. As you expand your menu and build more tables and seats to fill, your resources will also start depleting faster, so you'll have to start ordering more resources. It's really cool at first because it feels realistic with having to go outside, bring in the boxes, and stock the shelves. But things start to feel a little too real when you have to order a large amount of items, so going back and forth starts to feel a little more tedious and fun. It'd be really nice to either have the ability to carry more boxes at once, or be able to buy a hand truck to help with the stacks. When you build furniture, each furniture piece is assigned to preset spaces so you can't move chairs or tables around. There's also no option to expand the cafe itself. A couple things I also realized that aren't explained in the tutorial are loans and bills. You can take out a loan, but just like in real life, you'll be paying interest, so make sure to only take out a loan in emergencies, like if you've accidentally upgraded without first buying supplies. Also, shoutouts to fellow content creator friend Lock Vaness for being a hilarious example of taking out a loan when you don't need to. I think I might have to take out another loan, guys. Oh, wait, it won't let me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'll put a link to her stream in the description so you can watch the chaos unfold. Bills also aren't mentioned in the tutorial. They're kind of hidden and you have to pay them every day, but they don't actually seem to affect the gameplay at the moment, so maybe it doesn't matter. 
Something also worth mentioning is the restaurant cat. I love having a cat at the restaurant, I love getting to pet the cat, and I love getting to take care of it by feeding it. The cat also has an attention bar, and the cat goes through numerous cat emotions as it gets less and less attention, and it requires a frequent amount of attention. It's easy enough to restore the bar by petting and feeding. I kind of wish it was a little more similar to farming sims where you interact and feed it once per day to increase a friendship bar, than making it feel like an unnecessary pressure through the work shift. I really like the chill lo-fi music in this game. It's super relaxing and really sets a cool tone for the game. The sound effects are also really nice, with the sounds of change jingling or the swipes of dollar bills. The only sound effect that had a slightly irritating pitch to it was the whirring of the machine whenever you make a drink or a croissant, which also multiplies when you make multiple things at one time. I think it's supposed to maybe imitate a bean grinder, but I think it'd probably be more pleasant with a shorter whirring and the added sound of liquid pouring or the thud from bread being tossed onto the counter. Overall, I'd say Coffee Please is very enjoyable. It's a chill but engaging game to go along with your cup of joe, and it's only $12.99 on Steam, which isn't too bad. I did encounter a couple bugs like customers sitting in each other's laps, or if you give a customer who ordered a drink and food, but you give them the food first, their order turns into two pieces of food. If you enjoyed this review and want to see more game reviews like this, give this video a thumbs up, press that subscribe button, and let me know down in the comments below what you think of Coffee Please. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.